Well, this is going to be a little bit of a different video. If you're familiar with our channel, you know that Wayne and I usually visit venues in East Anglia and fish them. And we show you what the fishing's like, show you what the facilities are like. Um, we also do tackle reviews, show you bits of kit that we bought and that we use, give you our honest opinion of them. So most of our videos are really review videos, I guess. Even when we're fishing somewhere, we, we review a venue, show you what it's like. This isn't going to have any review element to it. I'm not even going to tell you where I'm fishing, in fact. Um, this video will cover multiple sessions, lots of different places. Most of where we've been fishing is public water, so the information is out there. But it's not the same as a commercial fishery. It would be wrong for me to advertise it. Local anglers don't want their favourite spots to get busier than they are. And also, there's one little stretch of river we've been fishing, which is actually private. Just been fortunate enough to be given permission to fish it, and also to be given the use of a couple of boats in which to do so, which is brilliant. Another thing Wayne and I don't often do, which I'm going to do differently in this video, is show you the rig that I'm using. And it's not because we're doing secret squirrel stuff and we want to keep it secret and keep our edge. Quite the opposite. Normally we're not doing anything that sophisticated. We're not going to claim to be experts if we aren't. But just, just so you know, when I'm out on the boat I like to use boat rods where I can. And these are Shakespeare Ugly Stick seven foot nine so they're really a sea fishing rod but it's just convenient on a on a little boat to have a boat uh, a rod that if i need to get to the end of it i can keep the whole thing inboard it's really easy to handle so my rig for float fishing a dead bait today i've got a stop knot up here a power gum with the tag ends left pretty long because then that sort of fends the knot off through the rod rings it goes through a bit easier and that runs down to a bead just to stop the knot jamming into the float. Through the middle sliding pike float. Another bead just to protect the bottom of the float from this weight. And then the weight is... Uh, oh, hold on. I think I'm in on my other rod. Bait runner's going, I'm going to pick this up and strike it straight away. This swam right up towards the boat. Oh, it's not a bad one, actually. It's not too bad. Well, I realise your view is mostly just my legs at the minute, but a take on camera. It can't be bad. Right, let's get this puppy in the uh, net. <laughs> Bit tricky uh, fishing, handling the boat and filming all by myself here. But we got one. An early result. Happy days. I have to move the camera to set up the unhooking mat properly. I'll come back to you. Well, there you go. Actually, interrupted me uh, describing the rig I'm using with the take, and um, as you can see, it works. Not a massive pipe by by any means, but quite a, quite thick across the back and decent belly on it. Really scraped double figures, I'd say. Nice fish. Great start. I'm gonna get a couple of stills and then slip it back. Well, that was a bit of excitement. Picked up my uh, float fished herring just as I was in the middle of telling you about the rig I'm using. Like I say, it shows that it works. 
So where were we? Seven foot nine boat rod. Stop knot in power gum with quite long tag ends so it will pass through the rings better. That runs down to a bead to stop the knot jamming into the top of the float. Just get a bit of weed off here. And then sliding pike float, another bead, sliding weight. So they reckon pike don't like to feel any resistance much. This can run on the line, so they're not going to feel it too much. One little uh, tip that uh, might be of use to people that I've started trying out, is to put a ledger stop here, that way I can adjust how f much line on the bottom I have laying down. So this, this weight, if I just had the weight, would butt up against my swivel to my trace, but I've got this ledger stop on here, so actually I'm fishing well over depth with the float laid flat, and I can have that amount of line or any amount I want by adjusting that pin down to the deck so that it won't spook the pike. You know, if you try to avoid liners with uh, carp, why not with pike? Wire trace, obviously, a couple of semi-barbed trebles, one in the tail, one in the flank. The pike are going to swallow the bait head first, so this is the best way to avoid deep hooking a fish and also hooks are facing the right way when you strike and when you play the fish. Barbed hooks into the bait and the barbless one's standing proud to actually catch you the pike. And I've got another little ledger stop on my trace there. And just re-adjust uh, this. So my top treble, got a bit of tubing on the shank of the hook and a le ledger stop butted up against the hook to stop it pulling down and having the bait all bent out of shape. Seems to be working pretty well. taken to bring in an old yoga mat, uh, put it in the floor of the boat, helps keep you a little bit quieter, soften your footfalls on the boards of the boat. If you're by yourself like I am today, you can sit on it, use the actual seat as a backrest and kind of stretch out, pretty comfy and it gets you down out of the wind. Plus it helps keep the uh, floor of the boat a little bit cleaner since I'm only borrowing it, I don't get too filthy. Although I'd say dead baits are the go-to method as far as I'm concerned and I've more confidence in them than lures, I do like a bit of lure fishing when I get the uh, opportunity. This was second cast after changing to a different lure. I know people say, you know, sometimes a different action or a different colour is just what's going to work on the day. I only changed because I was using a bigger plug with two trebles on it and it was getting loads of weed. So I changed to a weedless pattern and pretty much as soon as I cast in started retrieving this little jack pike hit it 
Now I probably could have just swung this in, but because it's a weedless lure, there's no spare treble to get tangled in the mesh, so I decided to get it in the landing net. And I was lucky not to lose it just there as well, mucking about with the net. Second cast of that lure, very gratifying. Here it is, Rapala, Rapala Weedless Shad, size 8 I believe. And there's the little jack pike. I'm just happy to get one on a lure. For me that's a win, size kind of irrelevant. We're getting towards the end of the season now and I'm kind of missing it in advance. This will probably be my last pike session of the season, I expect. Um, I'm sure in the summer I'll be back in the mood of wanting to fish for carp and tench and enjoying some warmth. It'd be really nice, but there's something about being out on the broads and fishing for predators. There's kind of a wildness to it. I don't think you can beat it. Wayne doesn't agree with me, but I think pike are probably the most exciting freshwater species to fish for, or at least one of them. Okay, they don't fight as hard as carp, but they do grow big, they're beautiful fish. You can fish for them with a variety of different methods. There's just something exciting about waiting for a predator to, to pick up your bait or to hit a lure. I love it. The broad is quite a strange landscape really, if I can call it a landscape. Maybe we should call it a waterscape, I don't know. From a distance it does look pretty boring because it's it's just flat but once you get out here on a boat and down at this level in amongst the reeds it's it's full of little mysteries you just want to know what's around the next bend just a amazing place to spend time the main thing is i absolutely loved the experience and I can't wait to get started again next pike season.